The water for that. Uh, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Shout out to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Greetings and blessings. Uh, shout out to the uh, brothers and sisters putting in the work. Um, tonight, we welcome back to uh, Jacob's Trouble. I know we haven't done well, done one in, in a while, and um, uh, but welcome tonight. I thought tonight would be a very good lesson considering uh, what uh, information we had from FEMA. Uh, yesterday and just now but um so if you are new to jacob's trouble series this is one of the uh, uh, rooms we uh, scheduled on thy kingdom come uh, this is episode 21 discussing fema's emp uh, preparedness now um throughout the jacob's trouble series we started this uh, almost a year ago uh we started with what is jacob's trouble discussing um, what what is it from a natural standpoint, what does the Bible say, um, how can we apply what we learned from it, and, um, you know, overall preparedness. We've discussed food preparation, we discussed water storage, we discussed food rotation, self-defense, first aid, we just discussed hyperinflation, we discussed famine, um, and with all this preparation, and, uh, you know, not just the topics, but we also covered um, how to prepare in the natural, how to prepare in the spirit, um, what not to do in the spirit, you know, things that we've learned from our ancestors coming out of Egypt, uh, things that would, you know, cause us to get cut off or um, have the anger of the Most High be kindled against us, which would be, you know, lack of faith, complaining, things like that. We then transitioned to a, another segment of Jacob's Trouble, which was um, analyzing Jacob's Trouble, which we would take uh, relevant movies and or TV shows, and we would you know watch them, and then the following week we would discuss it in the Jacob's Trouble class of what we learned and things that we could uh, pull from those segments. So, um, and then the most recent two classes we did on um, that was. Um, forgot, uh, the religious exemptions. The first class we covered how companies are denying religious exemptions. We covered uh, a seminar by a law firm training employees what to look out for or what to question. Um, then we went through, and the following week we did a lesson on how to actually draft one that would be successful or to increase your chances of success based on what we know from the employer's point of view. So tonight, again, welcome to tw episode 21 of Jacob's Trouble. This is FEMA's MMP preparedness. Now, I call it EMP, but they called it nuclear detonation. Um, and I guess, you know, before I get to that, um, I guess a little bit explanation as to why the, I guess, uh, spaces and classes. At this point, we've covered literally everything uh, you need to know or should know about um, Jacob's Trouble in terms of preparedness. Um, so at this point, I'm only doing lessons if I'm prompted to or something uh, pops up that I feel as an emergency in terms of, uh, for instance, the medical exemptions or religious exemptions and um, this lesson. So this lesson started with um, Brother Mike sent us a uh, link to Deacon Sakari's uh, video where he was discussing the uh, FEMA's response or they, they were planning on doing a seminar today about nuclear detonation and how to prepare and some things to look out for. And um, we've had an article today in the news that we um, discussed. I can pull it real quick or uh, King Ben, if you could pull that article you covered today so the people can just, you know, uh, snatch it. But that um, um, that was doing a webinar. So, you know, you just kind of like logged into their website and they just talked about it. It's supposed to last for like 30 minutes to an hour. but. Um, that webinar was canceled. 
Um, why did they cancel it? I'm not sure. I just saw the notice that it was canceled. So in any event, uh, we're still going to discuss it. Now, um, with the, there you go. Awesome. So this was the uh, webinar they were supposed to hold um, today, this afternoon. But uh, for whatever reason, they canceled it. I'm not sure if they're going to reschedule it, but it doesn't matter. Um, because the pertinent information that we need to know as the civilians, uh, we're going to cover tonight. So they say nuclear de detonation, which again, the, the EMP um, is more important because if, if you get hit by a nuclear, you don't need to worry about any of this because you'll be dead. Um, so the EMP is the after effect of a nuclear bomb. So if the nuclear bomb, when a nuclear bomb goes up, we see the huge mushroom cloud. But then after that, there's like a wave, an electric magnetic pulse, which is EMP, which will um, fry almost anything that has uh, microchips or circuit boards. So um, that's essentially what an EMP is. It's an electric magnetic pulse. Now, countries have been able to bypass that um, nuclear part. If they just want to do an EMP and just to knock out the power grid, they, would, they can just launch that and not have to go nuclear. Um, because again, um, nuclear, there's a, a lot of factors that you have to consider when, you go on, when you're doing nuclear war. Um, prevailing winds, the wind direction, the wind speed, um, the area, is a lot of stuff. So when the U.S. did it over Japan, they didn't care. Um, they were way out of there. But um, you know, now, now that more countries have it and you know, we've got the, the whole thing of hypersonics, uh, nuclear war becomes a lot uh, uh, Everyone is kind of nervous about it. So if a country wanted to attack, they wouldn't just knock out the power grid. Um, the EMP would, uh, you can just launch an EMP missile and that would do the trick. Now, the difference um, between a cyber attack that, that, that takes out the power grid and an EMP, what's the difference? Cyber attack is just what it is. They are uh, attacking um, the, inter they're going through the internet to attack critical infrastructure which would be your um, water, your electricity, your power grids, your banking, things like that. Okay. Um, so how to tell the difference. So let's say you're at home and the power goes out and your neighbors go out and the power's not coming back on. So how, how can you tell if it's, a, if it's a cyber attack or EMP? And this is very important. Um, if it's an EMP, um, your phone will be dead. The screen will go black. Your computer monitors will go black and it doesn't come back on um there that's it it's dead doesn't matter if you give it a power source if you try to um if you have a power bank that's that was spared the you know spared from the emp it's dead okay so anything um what a what a microchip or a circuit board would be fried okay people with pacemakers probably would be dead um just depends i don't think those are emp proof but um just something to consider so if you have one or know someone that has one you, you know, definitely be in prayer um, that they survive an EMP. And it also depends how far they are from the initial EMP. The closer they are from the detonation of the EMP, um, you know, the, the uh, more likely it, it would uh, be, uh, affect them. Now, um, cyber attack, if the power goes out, your phone will still work until the battery dies. You just won't have an internet or phone um, connection. Okay. So um, in my, I guess, which one would I prefer, cyber attack or EMP? Um, 100% um, cyber attack. You still have a chance because your electronics would work given a power source. Um, EMP, it's fried. So um, that would include cars. Now with an EMP, you want to, um, any car made after 1980 will probably stop working. Um, so for those who have some old school cars pre-1980, Keep those, do not sell those. Um, those definitely will come in handy. That or motorcycles and things like that. Um, but um, some things to consider. So um, one thing we should do, what to expect during the first hours, days, weeks of an EMP. Now, FEMA really doesn't cover this. I kind of read the article and it, it, it talks more about the blast radius and things like that. Uh, some things they did mention that I will cover that it was, you know, just kind of forgot. But uh, what to expect during the first few hours, days, slash weeks. So the first few hours, most of us will be confused as far as what's going on. Those who don't have eyes to see or who have no um, emergency preparedness bone in our body will be confused, which is the vast majority of Americans. So only 
there are 332 million Americans, and I'm just using America, I'm not in America, but I'm just using that because that's where the most, most of our people are. Um, 332 million Americans and only 1% are prepared for emergencies. Now, I'm not talking about the millionaires and billionaires with their bunkers. I'm talking about just your average Joe who, you know, have, you know, bullets and gun, I mean, guns and food and, you know, med kits and all that. 1% of the U.S. population is prepared. So take um, your neighborhood or your um, city and divide that by one or, you know, um, multiply that, do the math to get 1%. And that shows you how many people in your city is prepared. Um, or you can do your neighborhood and you'll probably be the only one. But um, so in the first few hours, no one's going to know what's going on. Um, going to be confused, you know, trying to call, um, trying to call, uh, get their phones to work. Their phones are not going to work. So people are going to be forced to go outside, look around, might start the car. Car's not going to work. What the hell's going on? Um, for the preparedness, for us, we're going to know what's going on. Um, and at that point, it doesn't, it won't matter if it was FEMA, if it was Russia, if it was China, you know, it's game time. So, you know, uh, I remember in high school, we would kind of worry about if the star player was going to be there or not. And, oh, you know, we've heard he might have an injury and this and that. And then, you know, when, once the game starts, it doesn't matter if he's there or not. Like, it's time to play. So for us, um, um, slash when it happens, and it may not be Russia or China, it may be a solar flare. Um, that is very possible. It happened in the 1800s. So that's not uh, beyond the pale of possibility. But in any event, uh, don't get too caught up in the who did it. Get caught up in what to do when it goes down. OK, so I've seen too many people discuss, um, um, you know, is it FEMA? Is it Russia? Is it the deep state? Is it this and that? And then I asked them, well, if it was if it happened right now, how prepared would you be? And then I get a lot of blank stares and it gets kind of quiet. So that's what you should be focusing on is your preparedness, which we will cover tonight. But in the first few hours, people are not going to know what's going on. Um, they're going to be asking questions. Some people might start panicking and run to the grocery store and things like that. Um, within the days and weeks following the EMP, um, you know, water is going to go out. You're going to have sewage problems, backed up sewage problems. Rodents will start being abound. Dead bodies will start to pop up. Um, there might be runs on, well, might, might, there will be runs on grocery stores, pharmacies, um, uh, camping stores. There's, there's going to be rides for, the, for those, for those uh, pertinent supplies. You will have some of the foolish people, some, some of the foolish of our people, you know, still in Xboxes and Playstations thinking that it might work and this and that and Louis Vuitton bags. But there will be rioting within the first, I say days, first couple of hours. People are not going to know what's going on. Um, but I think after hour two or three, once they realize these electronics are dead, the elevator's not working, the cars are not working, that, you know, people are going to start panicking. So, um and if, if that's the enemy, that's perfect because, you know, they can just sit back and watch America destroy itself within before they come in with the tanks and, you know, do the final um, sweep. But <clears throat> that's what you're going to expect. Um, you're going to, ex uh, I expect chaos to be fairly quickly. A cyber attack, I would stretch that time out. I would stretch that timeline out longer um, because with a cyber attack, people can, people will be driving around asking, when phones still work. Okay, my electronics still work. So, you know, what's going on? You know, there'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit more um, tamed, but once it realizes the power's not coming back on, like once that, once that, um, that, that, that thought gets in people's heads, like this is, you know, this is real, um, then that's when the panic is going to start. Um, EMP is going to happen a lot faster because your phones will not turn on. Um, I just can't emphasize that enough. No communication. So um, I expect that to be a lot quicker. Now, um, one thing I want to note um, with that 90%, I'll say more than that, but I'm, I, I'm, being, I'm being conservative here. 90% of what Americans occupy their minds with today will not matter. Um, the trends on TikTok won't matter. The YouTube views won't matter. Um, the thirst traps on Instagram, none of that will matter. How much money you have will not matter. 
um, you know, all the challenges and, you know, um, your, your score, your uh, fantasy, uh, football fantasy score will not matter. None of that, how much Bitcoin you have, damn sure won't matter. None of that will matter. Okay. And the same thing with, you know, for us Israelites, um, who um, a good portion of these doctrines won't matter, um, whether or not um, Paul was talking to uh, um, heathens or, you know, or Israelite, you know, Gentile, that won't matter. Um, you know, the discussions we have between our friends and families and scoffers and bug outs, that won't matter. Um, the precepts that will matter, I, I, I can assure you, these, pre these precepts are going to be the top of everyone's list. Um, Psalms 91, Psalms 18, Psalms 118, those will definitely be at the top of everyone's list versus the ones, you know, that typically, you know, the scoffers and bug outs want to argue every day. Um, those won't matter. Um, so with that being said, um, humans, are, we're going to, human, the humanity is going to drastically shed off a lot of the superficial things that we've become accustomed to. Some things that, you know, second and third world countries don't have the luxury of thinking about. Okay. So, um, with that being said, and, and something else, um, you know, someone brought this out to my attention. I was kind of just looking at a couple of articles and I was like, wow, this is, didn't even think about that. Um, one thing to um, be aware of when this EMP happens, and this, I think this is what's going to accelerate it more so than a cyber attack, is um, someone had this list. Please don't get scared. This is, this is a, you know, just a list. We don't know where we're going to be when this goes, goes down, but um, I pray the Lord has mercy on us to put us in the right locations when this goes down. But um, you do not, uh, places you do not want to be during the EMP. Um, on an airplane or a helicopter, um, those are probably going to crash. Um, EMP, yeah, all those electronics on a plane, they're going to crash. Um, trapped in the elevator, belted in a ride at an amusement park, trapped in the subway system, um, in your, you know, those kind of, those kind of things is going to be, uh, I don't know why you'll be touring a nuclear plant, but if you work there, you know, your phone goes black and the power goes out, it's time for you to go home, okay? Um, so, you know, planes will start crashing, uh, especially with the EMP. Um, planes, helicopters, anything in the air will crash. So with those explosions, I think it's gonna cause the panic a lot faster, um, you know? So, um, you know, with a cyber attack, the internet is down, um, your um, your vehicles will still be working. So the airplane will still be working. They might not, they might lose contact with the uh, tower, but they will be able to, to, to do emergency landing and things like that. The, um, everything will still be working. Uh, for the most part, I don't think all that's connected to the internet. Hopefully not, cheese. But it's just, um, you know, EMP, they're going down. Um, so that's something that's gonna hide up the panic, okay? So now that we discussed, I guess, the environment surrounding EMPs, um, it's going to get grim. I, I, I'm not going to, I can't spoil, I, I can't sugarcoat that. It's, it's going to be a very grim time um, because there's, um, again, there's no power source <laughs> to power your electronics. People who are on ventilators are going to die. Um, and I'm speaking all this, you know, absent favor of the most high. Um, a lot of people in the hospitals, not, that some people have have statistics of 90% of the US population will die in the first year of an EMP. So there's no war, no invasion, just the EMP hits and, you know, there's no um, interference from, um, you know, um, there's no, in, there's no, uh, I guess, interference from other countries or aid, the US population 90% will die. Okay. So, um, you know, we talked about the lack of access of food and water, things like that. But the people who are on their prescription meds, over 50% of Americans, which would be over 166 million Americans, are on prescription meds for mental health problems. So when they longer, no longer have mental, their, their, their demon suppressing drugs, this is going to, you know, uh, exacerbate the situation. But um, let's get into the preparedness aspect of EMPs, okay? 
So right now, um, I need you to take like a mental, a mental check of, of your a mental uh, checklist of your um, supplies, your whatever you have in the cabinets, whatever you have in the fridge, things like that, and just kind of assess if the power was to go out right now. You know, boom, lights out right now. How much food and water do you have to survive? Um, if you have, you know, if, so that's something that, you know, you should take account. If you have a couple of days, then yeah, you need to get on it. Um, if you have a couple of weeks, then that's good. But, you know, you start adding a little bit more. Okay, a couple of months, then yeah, you're good. Um, and build from there. Um, now, don't get discouraged if you have a couple of days, you know, start from somewhere. We've all started from somewhere. No one has six months worth of food and supplies um, starting out. So um, start, just start building it. Um, look up food rotation. Um, go to King Ben's YouTube channel and um, look at that while uh, we, uh, like, it shows you how to rotate your food in and out to make sure you're having the freshest food. Um, you're eating the freshest food before the expiration date, things like that. So you can slowly build your food supply um, while you um, get prepared, okay? So first assess how much food and water you have, okay? Now, the next thing I want to, um, to talk about is the Faraday cage. So the Faraday cage is a small device or small contraption that will protect your electronics from an EMP. Okay, so let me post this one. I did this one. It works. Um, there's some pictures on my Instagram. Um, I tested it out exactly as he did it. I'm about to post it right here. So this is how to build a Faraday cage in five minutes. I did exactly what this guy did and it works. Okay, um, that's a small trash can, aluminum. Um, you could do you can replicate this with a larger trash can and there's some videos to show you how to replicate it instead of using the plastic um, bucket you would use uh, cardboard for the larger ones because I don't think they make large buckets like that for the large aluminum can uh, aluminum trash cans and so I, I I copied this this format and it works um, one way to test if it works if you put your cell phone in there, and you try to call it from another phone, the phone won't ring, it, it'll block the signal. So as long as the signal is blocked, the EMP um, waves um, means it can't get in. So you're good. Okay, so build a Faraday cage. Um, you can build it as small as you want, as big as you want, but once you type in this video, you'll see other size Faraday cages and things like that. Now, um, what do you wanna put in this Faraday cage? Now, granted, you can't put everything in it. You can't put your refrigeration and, and all this, things like that. Um, but just, you know, some things that I thought of and things I put in mind when I had it was, um, small power banks. I put in there hand crank radio, um, walkie talkies, um, some of the, uh, gun, uh, lasers, the sights, um, because they have chips in it. The EMP may take those out to make them ineffective. So I put a couple of those in there. Uh, what else I put in there? I think those are the main things. So as you start putting stuff in there, you can kind of manipulate. Um, I put an old iPad in there that, you know, I had like some um, downloaded maps on there. So things like that, that would be useful. The power goes out and, you know, it, you could repower it if you had a, um, a power source or you had a way to, to um, supply power to those small devices. So things like that, you know, that'll great, greatly boost your chances for uh, natural survival, okay? Next thing you wanna do is have a plan with your family. Um, I don't know if you're working from home, I don't know um, if you guys are out, kids are in school, things like that, but whatever your situation is, have a plan. So uh, with me and my wife, um, I had a plan. Um, she she worked, this, this is before the pandemic, so I mean, now we're blessed to where we both work at home. But, um, you know, where she worked and where I worked, I told her, I said, if this happens, um, you come straight home and you take this way. So there's two ways she could take to, she could have took to work. I said, you take this way. And um, we planned that way based off the probability of low traffic. Uh, traffic is going to be crazy anyway, but um, you take this way. 
Um, so I know if I get home and you're not there in a certain amount of time, I'm coming to get you and I'm going this way, you know, don't, you know, so, um, have that plan established. So, you know, if you don't have a plan, have a plan now because people will be freaking out about their children at school, about their husband at work. He hasn't came home. She hasn't came home. Given an EMP, everyone will be walking or taking bikes or stealing bikes or skateboards or things like that, or horses, whatever. But um, just know that, but have a plan. If you don't have a plan now, you're greatly behind um, the ball. Just a small plan. This is what you do when this happens. You come straight home, you don't stop anybody's house. Um, you know, I had to really talk stern to my wife because she was working at a daycare. Um, and, you know, the daycare is, you know, all, all the entire daycare was um, all Edomite children. And I was like, babe, that is not your responsibility at that point. But, you know, um, you know, we had a stern talk <laughs> about that. Um, but it's, um, you know, whatever the plan is, have a plan so everyone is clear when this happens, okay, so-and-so should be coming home. They should be coming home this way. So if I have to leave, um, you know, um, I, I'm going this way. And I told her if she makes it home first, do not come after me. I'm going to make it home. Um, come hella high water, I'm going to be home. So do not leave the house if you get there before me. Okay. So having that plan kind of reduces the stress. So all this thing is doing is reducing stress. I mean, you know, I know we have faith in the most high and I know, <laughs> um, speaking, you know, when we, um, when we have that external test, our faith may get a little shaky. You may get a little anxiety. I've, I've been there. I've, I was there recently given this whole uh, traveling out of Babylon and things like that with the um, pop-up of the medical exemption. And, you know, the Lord just told me is, you know, is there anything too hard for me? So stuff like that, you know, um, we say we have faith but when we get those little external tests, you know, and I just pray, I was like, Lord, don't count my anxiety as a lack of faith it's just you know external you know reaction to well it's just it's just a natural reaction to external sim stimuli i still trust you i still believe in your word please don't count you know my anxiety or my nervousness as a lack of faith um now you may have to pray that prayer too <laughs> but um now but the thing is with these little tips of having a plan having a faraday cage knowing the difference between cyber attack and an EMP will help reduce the stress because, you know, okay, it's, it's an EMP. Okay, if it's FEMA, it's Russia, who cares? It's game time, you know. Um, Faraday cage, okay. Um, now, if it's, a, if it's an EMP and your screens go black, things like that, circuits are fried, refrigerator's dead, I wouldn't go to that. I would not go to your Faraday cage immediately to pop it open and start, you know, messing with your electronics because you might know they might not launch a second emp or things like that um you know people haven't been testing emps like crazy so you know it may have a, a after effect we just don't know i would wait just me personally i would wait a couple hours um before i would break open the faraday cage because at that point you really don't need anything that's in there maybe um oh I'll also put a ham radio in there too um, maybe if you want to access your ham radio and, you know, you have your little generator inside to try to get some information, but at that point, at that early on, it really wouldn't matter because it's an EMP. So, I mean, it's game time. Now, um, again, this is the first couple of hours, have a plan for your family. Now, if you're at home, if someone's at home, they need to fill up the bathtub. Okay. The water still may be working in some cities and some areas for first couple of hours, but fill up the bathtub, okay? You wanna make sure you have at least a decent supply of water. Um, if you haven't been buying water, you should. Um, you know, that's, yeah, I can't stress that enough. Don't underestimate how much water you use. Um, we become evident once, we, once the power goes out, how frequently we wash our hands and things like that. So um, with the uh, water supply, I'm gonna post this real quick. It's called a water bob. So, um, this right here gives you a hundred gallons of uh, water. So let me just post this. This may not work. I don't know. I've never posted anything to Amazon from Amazon, but let's see. So just look up, go to Amazon, type in water bob or go to YouTube. Yeah, it won't let me post it. Okay. 
So just type in um, water bob, and um, it kind of fills up. It, it kind of fills up the contour of your tub for. Um, um, it kind of fills up the contour of your tub to you know supply you with uh, tap water from your from your faucet. Okay. So um, hold on one sec. I have one from uh, YouTube. So. Okay. So this water bob is good. Um, people have done a test on it. If you don't have one, I would get one. If you don't have one, when this goes down, just fill up your bathtub, okay? Um, now, even if you run out of water, don't forget, we covered this before, but I'm going to repeat it again. Um, don't forget that your water heater has about 50 gallons of water stored in its tank, okay? So the way to access that, you would um, just, this little spout at the bottom, and you can turn that knob, let the few, like the first few, I guess, about, you know, a couple of seconds of that water drain out because it's a lot of sediments that sit at the bottom. So let that stuff fall out before you, um, you know, start drinking the water or start using the water. Even if you do, um, still, you want to filter it and, you know, boil it if you can. Now, um, you say, Leo, you said boiling, but the power's going to be out. How do we do that? Well, if you have a gas stove, you can kind of light the pilot. Um, maybe, I'm not sure I haven't tried that during the EMP. I know the ones um, here in Brazil, they're not connected to, um, you know, you just, um, you can hook up a, a propane tank on the side. It's like external versus the ones in the U.S., which are internal to the internal gas supply. So, um, I'm sure, you know, those ones will still work, but, um, for those who have electric stoves, which would be a, a, you know, I think a good portion of, um, households or apartments, um, this is why you want to buy the Coleman, um, propane tanks, uh, camping stoves or the, um, butane camping stoves, um, buy those tanks, store them, um, buy the butane tank, store them and, you know, that's one way you can cook and boil water after an EMP. They, they, there's no electronics um, in them, so you don't have to worry about an EMP. Um, they still work. Um, they work very well. I've used them a few times um, during the power outage in uh, Texas during that snowstorm, and uh, we've had a few power outages in our area during that time, and I've used them. They held up um, like a champ. So, um, you know, add that to your uh, prepping list. But um, when with this, you know, you want to be prepared to shelter in place because again, we don't have any information what's going on, who's moving where, you know, if, who it is, you know, things like that. Um, until you know, it's a, um, time to leave. Now, if you're part of a congregation and your leadership has specific idea, not ideas or sp specific instructions on where to meet and where to go and what to do and things like that then yeah, you want to follow your leadership. Um, for, but for those who are not, you know, in a congregation or things like that, um, just for me, per, uh, me, um, um, just for me personally, I, I wouldn't be running out, going to go find out what's going on and this and that. I mean, I already know what's going on, but I wouldn't be going to find, I wouldn't be leaving my house until it's absolutely necessary for me to leave. Um, and, you know, from, that can lead from, you know, it, it, you had to defend it and your house is full of bullet holes. It got raided. Um, it, it got, it, it's on fire. You have to leave things like that, which, um, in addition to what you can expect in the first couple of days of, um, an EMP, you're going to expect a lot of fires, lots of fires, uh, candle competency or candle incompetency is a very, um, real thing that's going to get exposed even greater. People are going to be having candles lit and drinking and things are going to catch on fire very quickly. And the fire department is not going to be there to put them out. So be aware that um, that may be um, something that um, you may have to experience, especially if you're in apartment buildings, things like that. Um, you know, the stupidity of people when they don't have, um, you know, a, uh, someone on TV telling them what to do. Um, is really going to come out or just, you know, incompetency, not just saying they're stupid, but just, you know, mistakes happen, you know, common sense things that you would have known um, if you've been in, using candles for, you know, months or years, but uh, a lot of fires are going to break out. Okay. Um, so just be aware of that. 
which with that being said, it might not be a bad idea to um, have some uh, portable fire extinguishers, you know, in your house. Um, might not be a bad idea. Uh, I would almost tell you to get, you know, one or two. Um, so if you're, you know, if your neighbor has a quick fire, you could put it out and, you know, it doesn't catch over to your house. We lived in townhomes, so our homes were connected. So if one house caught on fire, that was going to be it, especially if, you know, if there was no fire department to, um, render aid. So just be aware of that. Now, um, you know, again, so being, be prepared to, to be sheltered in place until it's time to leave. Um, when it's time to leave, it's time to leave. Um, and that's why when it's time to leave, you want to have your bug out bag ready. Um, for those who um, are familiar with the Jacob's Trouble class or, you know, some of the preparedness videos, a bug out bag is simply a bug out bag is simply a um, bag, a backpack that has the init essential essential items needed to survive a small period of time. So it doesn't mean oh you're a bug out. I mean this was a this was a term created by the uh, military during the Korean War. So um, you know soldiers instead of having their 70, 70 pound ba uh, backpack, they had to, you know, slim it down to get some, you know, just to bare necessities because they had to trek to a certain location or camp out or something like that. So that's all it means. It's just a supply emergency emergency supply bag. Okay. Um, we've done videos in the past. You can just go to YouTube and just type out bug out bag and billions of videos. Um, you know, just pick one, start watching it. And they all say the same thing. You know, we all say the same thing. It's not you know, oh, this person's over here is, you know, wild. And no, it's the same thing. Um, there's one thing, there's a couple things to be aware of with this bug out bag. There's a few types um, based on, you know, what you can expect or what you think is, you know, is coming around the corner. Uh, some is 70, 72 hour um, bug out bags. That's just enough supplies, food, water, snacks, um, first aid, um, candles, flashlight, things like that. That'll last 72 hours. Okay. And then you have some that are three days. And then you have some that are your long, long term bug out bags. You know, that's what people, you know, typically have like a hatchet or a saw. You see like a um, tarp at the bottom that they kind of make a tent out of. Um, you know, B, if you're making your bug out bag, you know, a couple of things to keep in mind real quick. I'm just not going to go too deep in this, but, you know, items that you know you're going to need. Um, there's plenty of times I had to go with my bug out bag and I had to slim it down a few times based on, you know, the weight. Um, the weight is going to definitely add um, stress or relief to your, you know, to you carrying it. So uh, keep in mind um, in terms of the weight. Um, in, you know, in these videos, they'll talk about that. They'll talk about items you should have. Women, um, some of the feminine products will be, you know, um, something you might want to consider. Um, hygiene products we all, you know, want, want to consider, but things like that. Okay. So that's when it's time to leave your house. Excuse me. Now, um, skills that will help you during an EMP or after an EMP, because the EMP, we're not going to feel it. Like you're, you're, you're going to see it. Um, you know, um, if you're on an airplane or things like that, yeah, you're going to feel it. But um, skills that will help you. Um, one thing is fasting. Okay. Fasting. Some of us will be forced to fast. Um, you know, we haven't, you know, some people just refuse to fast, but the most high may take this time to force you to fast. So fasting is a skill that you can do now that will help you. So some days, you know, once you kind of get in the habit of fasting, even when it's time to break your fast, you're not really dying of hunger. You're like, oh yeah, I broke my fast three hours ago. I can eat, but you're not, you know, it's kind of something you develop. So Fasting is a skill that you should get into practice too if you're if you're if you um, if you have it. If you have the heart of eh, I'll do it when it's time, blah blah blah. You, you know that that that's that type of mindset is going to be very difficult for you because the external stress is not going to work in your favor if you haven't used the time to fast. Okay. Next skill: um, filter water. Um, there's tons of different methods on how to filter uh, water. So, um, you know, learn how to do that. Okay. Um, one second. There's just one guy, he did a really good video on how to purify water, but 
Um, let me just put this up there. Um, but learning, but learning that skill on how to filter water and then clean it. You can get some of the life straws. I've seen those. I had a couple. They're pretty good. Um, you know, using a cloth and then you know running it over. Learning how to you know use the, a drop of bleach. Lots of things that you can um, use to filter water, but you have to learn how to how to do it. Okay. Um, whether you're in your house or whether you're in the wild, you don't want to get sick. And that's another thing that's going to get a lot of people uh, killed is not knowing, um, not knowing how to filter water. They're going to be, or they're going to be so thirsty that they don't even filter water. They're going to just start drinking it. Okay. So um, keep that in mind. Um, a lot of people are going to die from dysentery infections and things like that. So um, you know, knowing how to filter it, how to disinfect it to where it's drinkable and um, um, portable. Now, um, what do we have next? Next skill is first aid and CPR. Now, we've covered all of this before in the other Jacob Trouble classes. I'm just touching on this because of, you know, of the EMP class. So first aid, CPR, CERT, um, you can get free CERT training. Um, just type in CERT training and type in your zip code. And it's sometimes it's provided by the police department, sometimes it's provided by the fire department or your um, city. So um, just look it up. Those are free trainings, or you can start studying YouTube videos, things like that. But um, these skills, again, will help you when, this, when the if slash when the situation arises, you are confident because you have the training or you, you know, know what to do or what to look out for that will help calm the situation. And, you know, it's not just about you. It, it'll help calm those around you because they can look at they can look at you as someone, you know, oh, he knows what he's doing or, or she knows what she's doing. You know, and that kind of calms um, situation. Okay. Next is self defense. Now, I know people get crazy when you talk about self defense. Oh, guns, 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 guns. Yeah, yeah, guns are great. But in an EMP situation, you're not going to be able to carry all those damn guns. You're just not. Um, so get a gun that you're comfortable with, um, maybe two. And then after that, um, learn how to use it and how to perfect it. So I don't fear the man that has a thousand guns. I fear the man that has one gun that knows how to use it. Um, don't fear any man, but I'm just using that, 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 um, that saying, but, um, so, and the thing is when an EMP and it's time to leave your house and you got, you know, four or five guns, you're not going to be able to carry all those guns. You're just not, um, you can say, Oh yeah, what I got, you know, I got a horse or I got, you know, my car retrofitted with EMP shield and all this stuff, which EMP shield is a real device that you can add to your car if it's a car after 1980. But you run into another problem that you're the only one in the apocalypse driving around in a car. And what do you think that's going to do to those who do not have cars and who are walking the streets trying to go to their, see their, their loved ones who are, you might be alone or might be trapped in, you know, the elevator, things like that, and they see you riding around, you're not going to last very long. So um, that's kind of why I caution about, you know, vehicles during the EMP or after an EMP or something like that, because it just makes you a, it makes you a target. It makes you, a, you know, you're not going to be able to defend it and drive your car and run through all these people. It's, 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 it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, so with the self-defense, whether you have a bow and arrow, knives, whatever, learn how to use whatever you have, okay, whatever you're comfortable with. So don't get a gun just because people keep telling you to get a gun. If you're not comfortable with a gun, get something, okay, because people can come on here and tell you, you need to get a gun, you need to get a gun, you need to get over that, you need to do this, and then you get a gun and scared and you don't practice with the gun, and then when it's time to use a gun, the people telling you to get a gun are not there, and we're, we're, we're dealing with our own problems, and you get scared and, you know, there's an you know accident, someone gets shot who shouldn't have got shot and the person you're trying to shoot, you miss, they take your gun. It's, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, find something that you're comfortable with. Something, okay? I am, I am telling you to get something, not, you know, don't get a gun just because we're telling you to get a gun, okay? Bow and arrows, knives, blades, switch blades, things like that. Um, if you want to get the, what is those? Um, those tasers, um, you can put that in your Faraday cage to use it, and you, you know, have one on you, um, and then have one in your Faraday cage, things like that. 
but get something. Okay. So um, the next skill is fire making. Uh, learn how to make a fire. Um, very simple. It's, you know, learn, learn the mistakes of making a fire. Those are very simple. Don't use freshly cut wood from a tree that's still alive. Um, it's very moist and, you know, things like that you don't think about until you start doing it. Um, but just thinking, I'm just go. I'm, I'm just gonna go um, chop some limbs and go, you know, spark a fire. And you haven't even studied it. It's not a good idea. So just learn it first. Um, next one is learn how to read a map. Um, you know, those could be. You're, we're not gonna have GPS turn by turn signal. We're not gonna have that. Um, if, you, if, if I hand you a map, a typography map, the question is, can you read it? And I've, I was debating some people about this, and I was like, oh, my God, I just, I just gave up. Um, one second. Um, I was debating some people about this, and um, here's a video that should take you, you know, 20 minutes to learn. It's a three-minute video. You watch it a couple of times, and, you know, after that, go buy one for your area. You know, the buy one for the whole U.S., but buy one for your area. Here's a video. How to read a topo map. So those lines are not just for pretty colors and stuff. They mean something. Um, they mean like the contour of where you're going to, where, where, whether it's a mountain, whether it's a river, whether it's a hill, how high it is, you know, things like that. If someone just hands you this and say, hey, meet me here, and they put an X and say, we got food supply, shelter, guns, you know, the presence of the Lord is there. Are you going to know how to get there? That's the question. <laughs> so... It's not it's not a hard skill to learn. It's just something you just got to take time out and learn it. And, you know, some people say, well, you know, uh, you know, I would just pray the prayer, you know, well, you know, Harriet Tubman, she didn't, you know, she didn't know how to read a map or, you know, she prayed, you know, the Lord show her the railroad. I'm like, well, she knew how to read a map and she knew how to use a gun like that's, you know, but some people are going to do what they want to do. They're going to believe what they want to believe. And, you know, when the EMP hits. I'm not going to have that argument with that person about whether or not they know how to read a map. So, um, again, use this opportunity to uh, learn the skills that we should that you should learn. This is not a hard skill. Um, as long as you know the contours and, you know, north, south, east and west, which is something that most people struggle with. I still don't know why, um, you know, if um, something you struggle with, just work on that. Learn your four cardinal directions and then learn how to read this map. Or, you know, if you can read this, you can definitely read a city map because, you know, you should be familiar with your uh, city streets and things like that. Um, next um, skill is foraging. Okay, knowing how to process acorns. Okay, acorns, um, you can eat acorns, but there's a way to process them. One second. So this video right here shows you how to process acorns and you can even, um, you know, make it and roast them and then, you know, eat them like peanuts or you can make them into, you can make them into, uh, grind them. Um, oops, didn't save. Um, you can grind them into uh, powder and then make a, you know, flour or, you know, make a bread out of them. But corn, acorns are, you can eat them. They're fit for human consumption. But there's a way to process them. If you just take them off the ground and start eating them, you're going to get sick. So there's a specific way to process acorns. Um, you should learn that. Same thing with pine needles. Um, you can make tea out of that. Those are rich in vitamin C. Um, you know, there's um, a really good video I'll post in the uh, chat, the telechat of, um, you know, foraging. And they, in this video, they cover, you know, plants that are edible and have medicinal purposes, things like that. Now, here's the thing. All these things I'm giving you, you don't have to be an expert in everything. But if one person picks one skill and another person picks another skill and another person picks another skill, then, you know, when the Lord you know, gathers the elect to the elect, we would, you know, have a pretty robust team of people who are skillful in, you know, one or two things. I mean, I would pick fasting. Everyone should do that. Um, that's easy. Um, water filtration, that's an easy one. Just learn, you know, learn how to filter. You don't have to be an expert, but you know, oh, you know, this is unclean water or this water is from a stale, stale source, like a pond. We shouldn't drink from this or we should, you know, versus a river, which is a running source, which is, um, has a higher probability of being, um, fresher. Um, you know, things like that. 
So you could pick those skills that would help um, improve the, um, you know, uh, the mental uh, or the, uh, I guess, the spirit of everyone around you because, you know, you took the time to learn these skills. Now, um, the next one is um, bushcraft. Now, you don't have to learn how to, you know, create a whole fort with an axe and wood like you see on Instagram with some of these prepping videos, which those are staged. Don't feel bad that you don't know how to do those. Very few people, yeah, I'll say few people um, who know how to, they will show you from start to finish on how to um, build something like a shelter or whatnot. Um, there's one guy I watch, give me a second, I can put him up, but he's really good. I, li I like his videos. Um, I don't know if he made them in a while. He's from the UK, but you know, just some things, you know, some things are very elaborate. I'm like, I ain't doing that. But some things are just, hey, this is how you block the wind, or this is how you, you know, um, have a decent shelter to make it through the night. Okay, stuff like that, you know. Um, so I can find this channel. Yeah, I don't think I subscribed to it, but um, I'll put it in the chat, so don't worry. But he made some very good videos on um, this topic. So um, you don't have to be an expert, but just to learn some basics of how to, you know, manipulate the wood and things like that is a very good, um, is a very good, um, thing you should know or could know. Or if you have a tent, you know, you don't have, you don't have to know that, but if you know, if you have a, um, tarp, let me use this real quick. One second. Cause I know he made this video. Okay, here he goes. Yes, this is him. Um, he's got a very good videos. So he, he's from this channel's called TA Outdoors. He just shows you how different ways to how to use a tarp. Um, so you don't necessarily have to know how to do all the bushcraft stuff, but you know you can use um, your tarp that you have in your bug out bag to you know make different types of shelter based on the wind direction and things like that and you know so and also when you look at his video there's a lot of tricks and tips from other people on how to use a tarp to make different types of shelter so that right there you didn't learn how to create a fort in 24 hours like some of these channels i'm you know it's kind of scrolling through but you know how to set up a tarp to kind of block you from the rain and the wind and things like that um, again these are simple videos it's not you know incredibly hard um, but you do want to put some practice into it if you can if you're able if your schedule allows it um, if not you know, don't worry, um, but at least get this mental video, these these, these mental um, videos in your head. This one's a really good one. I'm going to post it real quick. It's from the same guy, so don't worry. It's from the same guy. This is the one I, I watched a few times on how to make different types of, how to use your tarp shelter, just your tarp and paracord. You don't need, you know, um, uh, logs and everything like that. So those um, skills will be helpful, but Let's talk for a minute and then I'll pass it over to King Ben and then we can bring out a few precepts. But, um, or he can give us comment, comments and I want to bring out a few precepts. But we kind of talked about the preparedness, but we have to talk about the lack of preparedness from everyone around you. Okay. Most people in your neighborhood, most people, your family will not be prepared. Um, those who are not in the truth. So if you keep talking to them about it, they already took the vax and they don't give a shit about preparedness. Stop talking to them about preparedness because they're going to be the first ones knocking on your door asking for food and supplies. And you're going to have to very, make a very difficult decision or an easy decision, depending on how your relationship is with your family. Don't know. Um, it may be hard or easy on how to respond to them. Um, and you know, if they're, you know, pro government and pro vax and pro this and pro that and pro beast, um, they're probably going to be sending some authorities saying, oh, they got, you know, green beans and Cheerios and they're, they're held up pretty well. So if you've been having those conversations with your family, stop it. There's no point. Um, they're not going to prepare just because you seem so passionate about it. I stopped years ago. Um, you know, they called me a madman. Um, and now, you know, uh, somebody, called me a couple days ago and said, oh, those things that you were talking about, um, those um, those winter, you know, things for the winter, this and that, uh, what were you talking about? I, I just kind of mumbled. I was like, yeah, yeah, something. I don't, you know, 
I didn't know, remember ex specifically, specifically what they were talking about, but I knew they were talking about winter gear. And I was like, oh, just go to Amazon. Like, I'm not wasting my time. Like, you know, you're, I've told you a year ago or years ago about this. And then now when you're in a cold spot, now you want to ask me what to buy. Like, I'm, I'm just go to Amazon. And so um, with that, I'm, I'm glad I brought the winter part. So I want to bring this up uh, for the winter preparedness. I mean, some of us are already in winter, but you want to look at thermal socks. Um, you want to look at um, long johns. You want to dress in dress in layers, but not too thick to where you start sweating and get sick. Um, hot hands are a good idea. Um, those um, those electronic vest. You can get those Amazon. You just plug in a little power bank and it heats up the vest. Uh, those are just good ideas to kind of stay warm um, during the winter because it's January and Lord knows what's coming around the corner for February and you know the you know until we. Um, until y'all finish uh, winter. But um, the mindset of the unprepared will be, you know, panic. They're going to be angry at you. Somehow it's your fault. They're, they're going to look for somebody to blame. Don't, don't think um, they're not going to blame you. Um, so you have to, you know, have a response for that. Um, now, if you, uh, one thing I tell people when they, you know, talk about their food storage and how to plan, you are responsible for those in your household. Um, a family of three is preparing for a family of three, uh, whether that's three months of food or six months or 16 years, whatever. That's what that family's preparing for. They're not prepar preparing for in-laws and cousins and uncles. They can. I mean, you can do whatever you want, um, but um, they don't have an obligation to, especially if you warn them and you told them, you talked to them about it. And, you know, they use the Bible to say, I'm getting out of here anyway because the rapture is coming. Stupid shit like that. Um, you don't have you don't have a responsibility, and I sleep at night knowing that I prepared for a family of two. Now, <clears throat> but um, if your family was to come knocking on your door or your neighbor um, because you were a little too loose with you know the way you were you know bringing stuff in your house and things like that, and they kind of put two and two together, um, you're gonna have a response to that. Um, don't know how you should respond. Every every situation is gonna be different. Uh, I would definitely pray and fast on how to respond if so-and-so comes or if this person comes or if this neighbor comes, things like that. So, um, but there will be panic. Um, the most dangerous person out there, I, I, I'm just, I, I can tell you right now, she saw, Shedemite will be the worst one, um, the absolute worst one, especially if they think you have something that can, you know, put their kids at ease. You know, you have a working iPad or you have a candy bar um, they're going to be the worst ones. They'll, they'll be worse than any military out there. So be prepared for that. Uh, especially I mean, Edom period will be worse. Um, Jake will be terrible. Any human being will be terrible, um, who is not prepared and not grounded in the Lord. But there's just certain, certain demographics that will be way worse than others. Um, uh, if you were part of the Analyzing Jacob's Trouble series, I did not do that on purpose, but there was a continuous theme from the producers and directors and actors of those movies that she saw was the worst one. Um, I don't know if that was just by, you know, accident or, you know, the, the directors were trying to tell us something, but that's just, you know, something to ex expect. Um, so be prepared for them, but at EMP, um, that's what FEMA, I'm sure FEMA was not going to go in this much detail. Um, just based on the article I saw, it was more about blast radius and things like that. And um, one thing they did mention, I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I forgot about that. Um, they did say, you know, things that are plugged into the grid will get fried too. So you have a power surge. So in the meantime, it's a good idea to, it's a good idea to um, get some, you know, surge, surge protectors and, um, you know, uh, plug those into your, you know, electronics and things like that, that may be able to salvage those. So again, um, the, no one's been in the EMP, um, since, um, you know, World War II. And before that, a solar flare was in the 1800s. So this will be new territory just based on what an EMP is and what, you know, um, scientists uh, have stated any, any electronic will be fried. So um, if some are spared, you know, all praises, you know, um, hopefully you can use that to um, enhance your chances, chances of survival. And one thing I would say, I would say about that, if you did put some like an old iPhone or an old self or an old, um, you know, smartphone or iPad in your Faraday cage 
and it still works, don't be trying to show off with it. I mean, I've, I've used those for the old iPad. I had um, emergency apps. I had pre-downloaded maps. Um, there's, a, there's an app called um, Here We Go where you can download the physical maps, like the city maps and all that. You can download them to your device. It takes up quite a, quite a bit of space, depending if you're downloading, which state you're downloading, if you're downloading an entire country, um, but it's all offline. Um, you know, that would be a good thing to have, but just know that if it works, tens of millions of people in your radius will not have that. So, you know, just be wise on how you, how and when you use it. Okay. So, um, with that, I yield, I'll turn it over to King Ben for any comments. Hopefully that was helpful in terms of EMP. I just wanted to focus on EMP. Um, but in any situation, um, uh, if you're prepared for an EMP, you're pretty much prepared for, you know, any other disaster. But I think EMP is like the pinnacle, like just, it, it, like we just went back to the stone age or we just went back to the 1800s. So, you know, I don't know how to ride a horse, but those who know how to ride a horse would be, you know, years, you know, uh, centuries ahead of everyone else. Um, so things like that. Um, um, you knocked us down to the pre-industrial age um, with um, an EMP. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, King Ben of, some comments you want to um, add, and then um, after you add, uh, there's a couple of precepts I want to bring out, and then um, we can open up the floor for questions or comments. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I really, I didn't have too much to really add. Uh, I thought it was uh, very well, um, you know, basically a recap you know, what a few things added on there, you know, because I remember when you did this, you know, as before, and a lot of times, you know, these are things that you just, you know, go over, like you said, it's almost a year now. Um, I just been, um, uh, while you've been speaking, uh, talking, I've been uh, not only uh, listening, but also, you know, searching through the information. And um, uh, it was something I just put in the, um, and this is very, you know, it's very, uh, um, you know, everyone is really, you know, trying to find information because as, as fast as it came, and this is what, you know, Babylon does, as fast as it showed up is as fast as it disappeared. And we don't have no idea why the website now is basically, you know, uh, has the 404 error on it and you're not able to get in. And this, this thing was scheduled today as of 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern and you know then nothing and this has been you know several of these events where they have just like kind of like popped up and then kind of disappeared but in the uh salakia and it's been all type of crazy things that have been going on you know throughout babylon and throughout the world over the last uh you know several months or so i mean year but mainly the seven months or so uh different type of uh you know, where people would call phenomena, loud noises, uh, sightings in the sky. You know, of course, we know these things, uh, you know, it says in Second Edges where the Most High will, be, you know, visit the earth. But um, uh, as these things are going on, you know, we, we can't be, uh, you know, deceived that, you know, Satan is up to, you know, a lot of, uh, he's devising a lot of plans, right? And, um, I had posted this in the in the telechat, but I'll pin it to the top here. Uh, let me see here. Okay. So they have a schedule of things that they have planned, right? Throughout the, the year of 2022. And uh, you know, hey, you know, their plans is not the most highest plans, but these are some of the things that they have as objectives, right? along with this exercise that suddenly disappeared. And it says here, this is the national level exercise 2022 NLE, right? Uh, it says national level exercise NLE 2022 will examine the ability of all levels of government, private in, uh, industry and NGOs to respond and recover from large uh, rupture along the uh, Cascada, uh, Cascada, Scotia, uh, subduction zone, uh, C, uh, CSZ, 
fault line that runs along the specific coastlines. The scenarios include subsequent tsunamis, aftershocks, and a spill of national uh, significance. Uh, and these are all, you know, they have all, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm, I'm losing. Uh, what do you call it when you abbreviate something? Is that an acronym for it, uh, Leo? Is that what it be called? Um, say that again. Would it be called an acronym or that they have all uh, like these things abbreviated as in? Yeah, um, acronyms. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have, um, of course, uh, you have, uh, this is called SUNS, uh, and that's uh, uh, Spills of National uh, Significant. Uh, the other one I said was the, uh, that was the, uh, the, the CSZ, that was the uh, Cascadia's sub. Uh, subduction zone C uh, C S C, and um, it says here caused by initial disaster. It says events will span the entire 2022 calendar year, and include web uh, webinars, seminars, workshops, tabletops, exercises, T X uh, T T X, and senior official exercises. Uh, SOE. All NLE 2022 engagements have alignment with the five NLEs 2022 objectives and associate focus areas. And with, sev with several engagements being connected to uh, connected and building upon one another Th uh, through this series of targeted events. NLE 2022 will engage federal, state, local, and tribal governments as well as private sector and non-governmental organizations to enhance our nation's preparedness. Participation in engagements will vary based on the topic and partners that would be needed in a real world response. All right, it says, uh, the five level objectives guide development of all NLE 2022 engagement and serve as a structure for evaluation of NLE 2022. Uh, catastrophic disaster preparedness, stabilization of initial recovery, national resource uh, prioritization and ed, um, ed, adjudication, intermediate and long term recovery, strategic court, uh, coordination. Right, so it has a long list of just the uh, the uh, things that they will be going into. Um, it has all of these different um, levels of the um, the different governments. Uh, it's like the different uh, management divisions uh, that will be t uh, partaking in this. Uh, you also have um, uh, I've seen um, it was another article that was connected with this on uh, Twitter, which talked about earthquake simulation, sim, uh, um, simulation, right? And I'll pin that in, uh, I'll put that in the tele chat as well. well. But you got to think with the recent uh, things that we have been experiencing, uh, earthquakes on the East Coast, um, the, the, I would say a week ago, six in succession. I'm not saying that they are doing these things, but I'm saying, that if, you know, we must be mindful of Satan and his devices, right? It says, um, uh, second Corinthians, um, two and 11, um, it reads, Salakia, um, it says, lest Satan should get advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices, Right. We have wildfires that's due to drought in, uh, um, in Colorado, right? But we also had an article of a week before of them uh, using a machine that is used to create snow. So all of these things are being brought to light, right? Now, I'm not saying that they are, you know, making natural disasters, right? Uh, we know, you know, most high, he has the power to do these things, to, you know, and he gives them the power should they, should he deem so, but it's, it's just don't uh, dismiss it as these things not being 
used by uh by FEMA to be able to um you know uh orchestrate as uh you know where they you know uh, um you know want us to move to let's just say that because they are they have uh by all intents and purposes they have the power to control the government it's set up in the law that should um a natural disaster happen they can um basically you know secede and take and, and basically you know control how the government is operated right so and that's that's factual it's just no way that you know that's that's easy to find right these are things are are you know on you know easy to locate on the internet okay last but not least um as leo talks about in um talked about in preparedness victory favors the prepared all of these classes these uh reviews have been for preparedness of our people we got to prepare in the times of we got to prepare for war in the times of peace right as we see this was supposed to be a nuclear uh drill basically a webinar regarding uh uh nuclear fallout as well as the EMP, which, you know, is in relation to one another. And they use this as tensions is heating up between China and Russia, right? Uh, even South, uh, even uh, North Korea have been, uh, tested, super, uh, you know, um, um, hypersonic missiles as we speak uh, today. So all of these things they know is, uh, you know, is at the ready and they, they are, they are brew, brewing. So this is a perfect time for them to use these tensions to be able to, uh, you know, a if they are practicing, if they are trying to, uh, you know, create some type of catastrophe, you know, these things benefit them as, as, as you know, to um, to put fear amongst the people to control in the, in order to control. So you know, this thing may have shown up to alert the people and then disappear just to see how people respond to it. The brother Deacon on a live was doing a live and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. You know, when people eyes is on these things, you know, Hey, Satan will, you know, Hey, put it back under the wraps and then, you know, uh, you know, bring it back out at a later time where people might not be in, people might not be in paying attention to it. So we must always continue to prepare, even in times where, you know, it it may be everybody else is looking at something else. Um, The last precept I want to bring out um, is uh, Book of Isaiah. Uh, I think it's uh, chapter 40 and start at 29. It says... um, Book of Isaiah, chapter 40 and 29. He he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, and uh, he increaseth strength. Even, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They, sh- they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint, right? So, you know, we can't be uh, fearful in these times as we see these things happening. Uh, Should the lights go out and not come back on, you know, these are not time to panic. Your people are going to be looking to you. Everyone's going to be honestly looking to you, even those that doubted you in the time when everything seemed to be going so well for them. Everyone is going to be looking for those righteous people, those righteous men and women that continue to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, the faith in Hamashiach Yahweh in the time when, you know, uh, wickedness was at its height. They're going to be looking to you for guidance, looking for your, you to be that calm, soothing person of that uh, representative of the Lord that can lead them to safety. Now, that's not saying that you're going to be able to or you're even going to do so. But it's just to say that, you know, we are those people. So, you know, this is the time to prepare your spirits for that, you know, 
these these are those times to take countenance and you know prepare 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 because those times is coming and they are closer than you think so um yeah that's all i really wanted to say i'm gonna pass it back to leo i yield con con the water for that i do bring out these couple of precepts this is uh second ezra chapter 16 um sorry verse 74. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of a trouble, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Okay, so that is a specific commandment um for i mean and if you read that in this context it's talking about these days that we're in so um but that's our that's our instructions to not fear him um and keep his i mean not fear him so like it, not fear the days of trouble and keep his commandments and precepts so um and also i want to bring um this is uh, psalms 44 verse 4 Thou art my king, O God, command deliverance for Jacob. Through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies, and hast put them to shame that hate us. In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever. Salah. Okay. So, um, you know, there's hundreds of precepts <laughs> that will, that, that, you know, that we could cover, um, thousands um, that would, you know, say the same thing or have that same um, vein, um, the same spirit. So, you know, for the supplies, it's, that's all it is, the supplies, just to get you to the next day. Um, you know, um, the stuff that I did prepare uh, before I left Babylon, even if I'm accumulating now, it's just stuff that's going to help me get to the next day. I have no, I have no um, faith in it. It's you know beyond than what it's used for. It's, it's, it's not my savior. I mean, um, the Lord God is my savior, and His Son uh, Yahweh Shai. Now, another precept is um, Isaiah forty three. Um, sorry, verse one. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from thy east, from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Among who them can declare this and show us former things? Let them, forth, let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have shown there is no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, say of the Lord God, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Okay. So there's pretty, I mean, there's, a, you know, many, many, many more we can go through that will, um, 
the most high God given his assurance to the children of Israel um, that we could, you know, use for and know that he's talking about us. So uh, whatever happens, um, whoever pulls the trigger first, Iran, Russia, China, the U.S., um, I sleep well at night. I, I doesn't bother me one bit. I just, I just wish one of them would do it so we can get this, you know, we can get out of this captivity. But um, prepare knowing, prepare, don't prepare out of fear, but prepare out of, um, you know, just prepare. Like, this is coming. So the same thing, you, you prepare for a test or you, you prepare for a game or this and that. Um, you know, just prepare. And one thing I want to add to preparation is your body. Um, that is one thing you do want to take care of. Start working out. Um, please take care of it because the physical stress um, that you're going to put on you, that we're going to put on our bodies when we're first for, forced to walk miles, <laughs> um, you know, uh, some of us, you know, won't be able to make it around the block. Um, but especially with a bug out bag that we think, you know, we try to pack our entire lives, things like that, um, just kind of get in um, some shape. So with fasting and prayer and working out, you know, you'll be able to get your body, um, you know, at least to be able to, you know, provide, um, you know, to, for it to won't fail you during this time. Uh, so with that, I yield. If there's any questions specifically to, um, well, EMP preparedness is kind of a broad categories, but so if there's any questions, we could take those for a little bit before we close out. Um, and uh, with that, I yield. We'll give a few minutes for someone to raise their hand. Um, um, if there's any questions, feel free. Okay, we have um, brother coming up. Brother Shalom, Fee. Fee. Shalom. 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 Hey, one question. Uh, with the life strong, there is no, uh, there's no way of it telling you like when it's um, like expired or when it's been used. Is that correct? Um, to my knowledge, that is correct. Um, I mean, it's it's based off of a filter, so uh, I think the more you use it. You know, it kind of would degrade the filter, but based off what they've tested and with some, some of the videos I've seen on YouTube, um, you know, they work pretty well. So, I, but I really wouldn't worry about um, it like degrading. Um, I think you'd be okay with that. What is it like? Um, I'm kind of going off memory, like a thousand gallons or something crazy like that. Uh, you broke up. I'll slock you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. You're good. Okay. Uh, is it like the? Uh, I'm going off of memory. Is it like a thousand gallons you get out of it, or something like that? A hundred gallons? Something? Oh, I have no idea. I think they use the straw just for when they want to drink out of it on the go. So if they, you know, see a pond or something, I've seen some videos. Some some guys they they put some dirty water in there and they sucked it out and uh, spat into a separate glass and it's clear based on the two things. So it works, but um, even then, I would still, you know take the time to filter it and clean it before I would use it just to be safe because um, you get sick out there. There's no 1-800 number you can call or customer service. So just take that extra step just to filter it. God, God. That's, that's all I had. I appreciate it. God, yeah. no problem. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I don't know. They got, like, I've seen the life straws and, um, like, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of putting no straw in anything. I want to, like, see what I'm, um, so they got, like, uh, they. I, I, I've seen that they uh, Life Straw came out with something that's like a, a almost like a thermos that they have now, where you can put the water in there and it'll filter it out. So you can actually, you know, instead of putting a straw down in something, you can actually have like put the water in something and have the water in it to filter it out. Also, it's cop uh, it's similar to the Grail. The Grail is also something that has been tested. It works very good, and you can put a certain amount of water in there and um, it'll filter it out. Okay, because I got the uh, bottles, too. I got the straws in the bottles. Um, are you speaking kind of similar to the bottles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Life Straw has a, a bottle, right, instead of just the straw that you can put. Um, let me see. I can actually, I actually could pin it real quick. Uh, give me one second. I just had it. Oh, and real quick, as you're pinning that, one thing I, I do want to mention, we talk about food and stuff like that and first aid. Um, you want to make sure you have some, um, this is for everybody, um, some multivitamins in your, um, you know, in your stash, because um, that could definitely prove helpful. 
keep your keep your immune system, uh, um, your um, vitamins and nutrition up um, instead of just eating on snacks and stuff. So add some multivitamins to that to your kit or bug out bag. I yield. You can go ahead. Yeah. So that's the that's that's the, that link should show you the Life Straw bottle, and um, that's the Life Straw bottle, and the, it's similar to like I said to the Grail. The Grail is um. It's so like one of my favorite. It actually um it's around the same price. This is the uh the Grail. Let me pin this next. Um the Grail has a little different system of how it works versus the, the life straw. Um where you put the water and you kinda like pump the the like the the whatever it is, the waste out. So yeah, that's the link to the grill. I think the grill might be a tad bit cheaper, but they're around the same price. I think it's like the, the grill now is like probably around um I think it's about fifteen dollars cheaper, probably. Or no, no, probably a little less. It's a little less cheaper than the sixty nine. I think the the life store is around seventy and the grill is around fifty five, something like that, on sale. So both of them are good. But I I I'd rather both of those than just getting a straw. You know, you can actually carry like water with you with these. So, uh, yeah. Um, the water for that. Is there any other uh, questions from the crowd before we close out? Feel free to raise your hand. Um, okay, I think that's it. Um, Brother Ben, uh, King Ben, is there anything else you want to add? Um, if not, we can go ahead and close out. I'll post the links in the telechat. Um, and, you know, someone wants to DM me for the links for some of those um, videos regarding uh, food preparation, things like that. I'll uh, Like I have them on a playlist on YouTube so I can just um, uh, share them again. But without, um, with, that, uh, with that being said, um, is there, if there's anything else you, uh, you want to add, feel free. If not, you can close this out. Um, no, nah, I ain't got nothing else, King. Uh, definitely a good lesson, good recap. Uh, yeah, you know, pray everybody, you know, uh, was, um, you know, basically advised, you know, edified with the information being brought out. Uh, okay, I see Sister Anaya had a, had a question. Let's bring it up. Hey, Shalom. Yeah. Shalom, Shalom, sis. Shalom. I was going to ask for the links to... My bad, I'm busy with my hands, but I'm gonna ask for the links to be sent to my back chat, please. Ka, ka, all praise. Ka, window. So I, I am the bar. So, um, if uh, was that your only question, sis? Ka, ka, all praise. All right. So if anybody don't, uh, if nobody has any other questions, this will be posted on the YouTube. Um, you know, be uploaded. So, uh, of course, we want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Thank him for, you know, allowing us to come before you. Uh, Brother Leo, for putting this together. Pray that y'all have a beautiful rest of your evening. Stay safe, of course. Stay vigilant. And, um, hey, Shalom. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chuck this here, yeah, 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 y